Uh, so this, um, I built this workflow on this form. Um, one of the things that are lacking in um, Microsoft Graph uh, for us, for a lot of people from what I understand, is the ability to report on uh, MFA. Uh, the current reporting out of uh, Graph, you know, allows you to see everyone's status with regards to whether they've got, you know, methods reg registered uh, and things like that. But it doesn't actually tell you a really good picture as to whether they've got MFA enforced, particularly through, you know, if you're using conditional access, uh, all that sort of stuff. So this was a form and a workflow, a couple of workflow flows that I created to report on all that. Um, so, you know, it's very accurate from what I can, all my testing that I've done. Um, this will actually go through and uh, it allows me to report on um, either all, all the organizations that we manage, or I can choose from a specific organization uh, and then pull out a report. So, um, from here, I can, you know, I can leave it as all organizations for the testing here. I won't do that because it actually takes quite a long time to run. Um, I'm going to select a specific organization. Uh, I'm not going to choose one from the list. Uh, from there, I can choose where to send a report to. At the moment, it only goes out to email via an attachment, but I will have a couple of other options to send it through like a Teams tab. Um, send it into the body of an email. I know there's a couple of uh, people that have already done something similar to that, so I'll be able to do that as well. Or send it directly into a SharePoint uh, list, uh, like a document library or something. Uh, we do have, you know, it it outputs like a CSV file. Uh, so we use that in like bright gauge and things like that to send our reporting to our customers just to sh show them what their MFA status is for all their, for all their users. Let's do this. So with uh, the um, Microsoft Graph reporting, it, it won't output um, disabled users. Uh, it'll only output uh, any users got a license or an administration account. So um, we can tick this box here. It'll include all the users, but it won't really have a status on them. Uh, that's handy if you want to just see an overall view of what the total user count is and things like that. It'll give some basic details on those, on those accounts, even if you don't return MFA status. So usually I'll tick that box. I will have schedule reporting uh, functionality in this as well. So the client will be able to open up this form, select all these options. It'll only be in the context of their own uh, you know, organization. Then they can, they'll be able to tick a box and uh, schedule a report to occur once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, uh, and send it to like an email address or something. So submit that. So what will happen? It'll run a few workflows. Hopefully it'll work. So it does quite a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to show the workflow in just a sec. Well, I'll show it as it's running, actually. First thing that it will do, oh, that's the big one. Uh, so this is the first workflow it kicks off. It determines if it's all organizations or if it's a single organization. Um, in this particular case, I've only one run it as a single org. Uh, so it'll go here. It'll get the date. It'll run this uh, sub workflow here, which is this massive one here. <laughs> Excuse me. So what this is doing is it's pulling the a list of all the conditional access policies. Once it returns a list of all the policies, it determines what the what those policies are doing. Uh, current point in time, these policies are only they're only getting things like uh, if if it's enforcing MFA, if the policy is enabled. So if it's in read only, it will not do anything. It'll continue on because it's you know it's not actually enforcing MFA. Uh, it'll make sure that um, you know it's actually enabled and things like that. It'll make sure that it's um, you know applying to all applications uh, and not just nothing. Um, so what it will do then is once it satisfies all those conditions, it'll go through and it'll actually determine, uh, it'll, it'll go through and check, you know, is there specific users or specific groups included in the policy? Uh, are there uh, users and groups that are excluded? It'll poll, it'll go through and it will create a list of every single, um, account that is, uh, interact, you know, that that policy is interacting with. Uh, and then what it will do is it'll build out a list and determine who's included, like, so who's got MFA, um, you know, enforced, who is excluded from the from the group, uh, from the uh, list, from the policy, and it will build out a CSV file 
Uh, that CSV file looks like this. I've just hidden the, the uh, like the username fields just for the purpose of this demonstration. But what it will then show is so so show something like this. Uh, in this particular case, this client has uh, con uh, conditional access enabled, and it's enforced on all cust on all uh, accounts, with the exception of a few. Um, to give an example on on that, if I was to um, just filter out the accounts that are only enabled, I can do things like this column here will determine whether if the uh, account is excluded. So it will go through and it will check that, and it will actually return those uh, account those accounts. So in a normal um, situation where you would just rely on the default graph um, reporting, these accounts would actually come back as having MFA enabled and it would it would seem that as if they've got it enforced. That's not actually the case um, because conditional access, they're in an exclusion that they're actually excluded from the policy. So by me going through and checking each policy and determining what status is for each user against each conditional access policy, I can get a really good, accurate um, report that you know that will show these accounts. It's really, really, definitely, really good for where you know if someone accidentally puts something in a in a group or uh, in an excluded you know in a policy that excludes them from MFA, you want to know that. And certainly the client wants to know that. We've had, you know, you can get situations where, you know, you've got conditional access enabled, but it's not working because, you know, an account is not being, you know, they're not having MFA enforced. So that will then output all those details into a CSV file, which at this stage, it will come down here and it will go and it will send it just via an email. Anyone got any questions on that? Yeah, you've got uh, a bunch. A couple hands going, up. Yeah. <laughs> let's start with the folks with their hands up. Uh, uh, Frank, I think, did first. What's up, Frank? So um, <clears throat> when you're doing the the uh, review on the exclusions, are you doing it just at the at the user context, or are you also taking it further and looking at it from like an app perspective? Uh, so, I mean, at the current point in time, I'm only going off um, when, a con when a conditional access policy is applying to all applications. Um, so, once I've determined that that policy is applying to all applications, then I will then I'll go through and look for all the users that are applied to that policy. So, it's basically a like. Um, and I, so it'll go through here and then it'll go through and then check each user account and then it builds out a list, um, which is, there's quite a lot of ginger in, in this sort of stuff. So I mean, it'll build an array and determine whether each account is, what what section they're in. So if they're in an exclusion, if they're in excluded, uh, then it will, it'll come down here and it'll, it'll build out that object and and, uh, and uh, just for for clarification when you're doing the exclusion list you're not looking just for the user you're looking for like a group and whether that user is also in that group too yeah yeah correct so oh, geez, um if man, I, that's badass <laughs> yeah so if i got a specific group here um i'll then get the group uh, the, I'll get the group and then I'll get the users within the group and then I will then pull the list out from that. So that's just an example. There's this like there's a lot of code. I know with um yeah with Roost it's supposed to be low code, but this is this has got a fair bit of code in there. So um yeah so it'll it'll go through each it'll, it'll go uh through it'll do one level of nested groups. Uh it won't go any further than that though. Um, so uh, 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 one quick thing about that is I'm not sure uh, if that applies here, but Microsoft does have an API request that will pull a uh, nested group membership. Okay, that's um, uh, really good to know. <laughs> it's like get 
resultant members or so. I'll, I'll find it and send it to you. Yeah, awesome. That'd be really good. Uh, that was one issue that I had had seen. So. Awesome. Brandon had a question. Brandon. Yeah. Uh, first off, that's awesome. Um, uh, if you don't mind sharing that, I would love to get my hands on that. But um, is this requiring uh, at least Azure AD P1? Because um, I know with the free versions, you can't normally run that granular of a report as far as um, authentication methods go. Yeah, exactly. So it it is that is the one of the caveats. You do have to have at least a, a, a premium tenant with Azure like Azure Active Directory. Um, this report will it will account for that. Uh, so there's sections here where you know if it fails to get if it fails to get any conditional access policies, it then falls back to um, relying on security defaults. So even if you don't have any conditional access policies set, this will still get MFA. Um, get the MFA status of accounts. Um, so it will rely there on, uh, you know, security defaults. If you don't have security defaults in place, it will still fall back and try and get the MFA status of all users anyway. Um, one thing I am working on, uh, like an additional feature for this will be to uh, poll the signing logs um, for a, say, you know, four to six days and then get the sign-in statuses for, for user accounts that it can't determine uh, a direct MFA um, status. And then, you know, for example, if they're using multi-factor authentication or single factor, then it'll work out that, you know, they don't have MFA enabled and it will report on that in here as well. So you do need wow. a, yeah, a premium tenant for all that. So that does, uh, you know, take all that into account here and it will usually return a, uh, it'll return an unknown uh, status uh, for any premium tenant. So it'll still return the uh, user list. That's awesome. Yeah, I was already impressed with the uh, base workflow and then you scrolled out to the uh, checking for security defaults and my mind was blown for a second time. So thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm going to go off script a minute. Um, well, first off, let's, is there any more questions for Lachlan? Not really a question, but uh, just want to say fantastic job. Thanks. And thanks it's again for waking flow. up. Yeah, also that's right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it does look a bit like a fish, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, congrats. This is uh, fantastic work. Thanks. Thanks, heaps. That's no, uh, really good working with Roost. I, uh, I really do enjoy it. My wife, probably not as much. <laughs> <laughs>